Hello everyone, welcome to the commentary version of Razor Space Simulating a Space Future 7. This is the construction of Newport Depot Continued with two new modules. The first one launching on a Starship Super Heavy launch. And we can see it steaming here. Newport Depot is still a ways to go as far as construction is concerned. It's a little bit less than halfway through construction. And so it's supposed to be a substantial sort of station. It's got two independent uh, crew sections for two independent crews. And then of course, four whole starships in order to refuel things with. The starships are acting as the fuel tanks for visiting vessels. And yeah, so we've got a lot left to do, but I don't intend for this series to be entirely about the construction of Newport Depot, but this video <laughs> is. Uh, so here is the launch of Starship doing its thing. This Starship is once again by P.E.K.K.A. Uh, so it's P.E.K.K.A.'s mod and everything. The landscape, the Tampico landscape is mine. And of course there are many many other mods involved including the required mods for Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System and all that business. Uh, if you're wondering how I get the information at the top, that's KSP Logger from Linux Guru Gamer. It outputs text files and then I use OBS to grab the information from those text files. Uh, unfortunately, the text files output information in sort of a choppy manner. I can't get it faster than one update per second. I tried to change the configuration file to make it faster, but that didn't work out for me. Uh, maybe I was doing that wrong, but that's why it updates the way it does. So here Starship proceeds on to orbit, and I'm really guilty of not playing around enough with the cameras. You know, the camera views are pretty consistent between the episodes, and I really need to use camera tools or something like that in order to get some fancier shots or something. But anyway, we are on our way. It's on the vacuum engines now for better efficiency. Not that it needs it with this payload. But it turns out that the system will throw me a curveball. Uh, I do have Dang It in this install, and it was allowed to do failures. It won't be allowed to do failures after this, uh, because what it does is it ultimately kills the RCS on Starship. And, you know, normally it would just kill one port, but all of the RCS on Starship is functionally one port. Uh, because of the way the mod is made. So there you go, Starship RCS failed, and so I had to use the tugs. I actually had to use the tugs for a little bit more than what's shown here. I had to use the tugs RCS to stabilize Starship first, uh, because otherwise it was just flipping around and it would not be good to actually try to get the payload out of it. But I skipped showing that part uh, with the RCS blowing inside the cargo bay. Uh, with the tugs trying their best to keep things steady. Uh, but ultimately, we were able to stop the rotation and get the payload out, and the tugs were able to grab it. But the tugs do not have enough Delta V to get the payload over to the station. Uh, they do have a fair amount of Delta V considering their size, but uh, yeah, it was not enough to have them carry this whole module over. And so I'm going to need to launch something else and not something particularly big right i mean it doesn't have to be overwhelming or anything and so i decided on a sagita launch the smallest rocket i have currently in service at tampico and it's carrying a rescue tug in fact even it is overpowered for the rescue tug i made the rescue tug as small as i thought was necessary the rescue tug is still 10 times the volume of the little tugs and maybe I'll adapt it as a standard propulsion unit for the station, I'm not sure. We would probably have to dock four of them to the station in order to make it work out just because of the layout of the station. So there we go, that's the first stage. And of course this is all automated with KOS, it's a KOS script running it. And there was quite a delay there, but there we go, the first stage is off. And this engine has an extendable nozzle. It's just one of the first stage engines in a vacuum variant. And it is all methane and oxygen on the Sujita rocket. It's my own rocket design, 3.66 meters in diameter. It's basically like a somewhat smaller Methalox Falcon 9. It's capable of carrying, without any boosters, uh, probably about 15 tons to low Earth orbit. So there's a tug, a huge battery. The reason we have a huge battery is because, first of all, those tugs and the module are probably out of power by now. And I didn't 
want to put solar panels and this the battery made the tug look a little bit more substantial we had to have the docking port and uh, once you have the docking port well it gets pretty wide and so I just wanted to give it a little bit more depth so the battery added some more depth to the tug and very quickly I was able to make the rendezvous with the station and tug did its job really just barely I barely put enough Delta V in it though I I think I rushed things a little bit with it so I used all the Delta V that I had available to hurry things up, considering, you know, we're already behind schedule as far as getting this module to the station. So after this, I decided to stop Dang It, or I think it's Dang It, that's the failure mod, from actually killing our stuff. I'll wait until we get to the tourism phase of this whole business before I enable that again. So. Uh, I used that excuse to have the second module launch on the Mini Star and Orion carrier plane instead of Starship. So we will say that Starship is down for investigation. I recorded this before Falcon 9 had issues, so I feel a little bit guilty now. Uh, I, I didn't mean to jinx anything. but uh, So Starship was down for investigation on RCS issues, and I decided to use the Mini Star and Orion carrier plane. Of course, I've been recently testing the Orion carrier plane in this particular install to make sure it can land safely at the Bahamas and uh, we can get me start with a payload up to orbit properly and everything like that. So that testing haven't been successful. We know that recoverability is a thing for the system in this install and we are carrying the module with it. It's also much smaller than Starship and Super Heavy of course. It's less than one third the size, uh, closer to one quarter really. So, it's pretty good in that respect. Of course, Starship and Super Heavy are way overpowered for these modules that we're adding to Newport's Depot. The issue is that the modules are bulky, so they need certain launchers, just like this SLS, maybe New Glenn uh, or Starship are launchers that can carry them because of their sheer size. So, Mini Star does its thing with its aerospike engines and we proceed to the station. So as I've hinted, uh, basically, ultimately in this install, I'm going to be continuing what used to be the Solar System Tourism series, and I'm going to have tourists from my Twitch channel uh, who want to go to various places, uh, basically buy tickets with the in-stream currency struts, uh, or maybe channel points, I'll think about that. And so they'll buy tickets to various locations around the solar system and we'll have them do tourism. And in that case, maybe we'll have some failures turned on with Dang It so that maybe they have to troubleshoot certain things just for fun, uh, give it a little bit more drama to things. But this time, instead of the way I did in the old solar system tourism series, I want locations for them to visit. And Newport Station will be one of, or Newport Depot will be one of those places. And so we have all these locations that they can visit that are pre-built instead of me doing the building at the same time as launching them to the locations. And in general, in solar system tourism, we didn't have places for them to visit. Part of the places for them to visit are those domes that I've been making. Uh, basically, I'm going to have cities along the way as we see the module decouple from the mini star. And so I'm going to have set locations on the surface for them to go to. Uh, that will have places for them to stay and stuff like that. Maybe even pizzas. Uh, pizzas on Mars and stuff like that. So this series, the Simulating a Space Future series, is basically building up the infrastructure and the locations for the tourists to visit, is the idea. So here are the little tugs that are getting the module to Newport Depot, but there's a lot of construction to be done. Some of the stuff is going to be just placed with Kerbal Constructs. So it won't all be in this series. Some of those things will just be Kerbal Constructs placements for them to visit. They may even be like monuments as in KSP2. Really, KSP2 inspired some of this. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.